Hi there! You're watching the Gardens and Graveyard channel. My name is Charisma and today we're in the studio and we're going to talk about moon gardening. So this is something that I brought up last month that we were going to start doing moonly Mondays or Monday moon days, whatever. Um, and I really want to get focused on gardening by the moon in the garden and creating like, I really want a moon garden, like specifically one area that's going to just shine so brightly in the moon um, when it's a full moon. But I also would really just love to make my entire garden lit up underneath the moon. It's not like the entire garden is going to be all white flowers because that is too boring for me. I don't want all white flowers. So, um... It's not going to be a moon garden in a traditional sense, but it is going to be a moon garden in the sense that I want my pathways lined by white flowers and I want little pops of white um, flowers or foliage to shine in the moonlight. I would love it if on dark nights when there's a full moon without any solar lights or patio lights on, that my garden would just be lit up enough that you could actually navigate the entire, um, you know, circumference of my home in the garden without a flashlight, without, um, you know, additional lighting. It would just be the moon lighting the paths and guiding you along your garden journey. I think that would just be something really special and super magical and I I just want to try it. I want to try to see if I can make that happen. So, um, but in addition to creating moon gardens that shine underneath the moon, there is something to be said about gardening by the moon. There's a whole science behind it and one of the most popular ways to learn more about gardening by the moon is in the farmer's almanac and this is the farmer's almanac for the year of 2023 and if you're not familiar with this little booklet it has been out in publication for ever since 1818 wrap your mind around that that is over 200 years of a paper publication dedicated to people who farm and garden. That is just amazing. And it's a wealth of information in here. Um, you know, weather and um, a little bit about um, just interesting things. Cor Fanny Lou Hamer, a courageous sharecropper who turned into a human rights activist in this little article about her. Um, but there's, you know, reviews on um, products and there's uh, lots of, just lots of little articles. Um, let's see, this is peak foliage dates, which is really cool. So that's kind of fun. You can, if you know, like you're going to be visiting somewhere, maybe you want to pick dates that are like at the peak of their fall foliage. Um, I don't know. That's a lot of advertisements that direction. This talks about the moon. That talks about eclipses. Talks about the names of moons. Because, you know, there's like the Cheshire moon or the wolf moon. And it tells you like the history of why they're called that. Um, and then it has a whole calendar on the best days. And this is an area of the book that I thumb through a lot. And it's the best days for cooking and baking, the best days for health and beauty, the best days for parenting. Well, I've never looked at that column before. The, the best days for home maintenance, outdoor chores, farm and animal, advertise, travel, home, and more. And it does things like, so let's look at the best days for cooking and baking. So in February, the best days to bake is the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 28th. The best days to brew is the 19th. The best days to can fruits and vegetables is the 11th, 12th, and 19th. 
um, and so on and so on. It's, um, and it's all based on the phase and cycle of the moon and how it's lined up with the stars so um, that they determine um, the best days to get those tasks done successfully. Uh, and it goes on, it, there's a lot, there's just a lot. <laughs> but the other thing that I really like is at the very back portion of the book is Gardening by the Moon. And it goes through buying crops, above ground crops, root crops, transplanting, seed beds, seedlings, forage crops, and it talks about what days are the best for which type of crop that you're going to be planting. So in February, above ground crops should be planted the first and first, second, third, 20th, 21st, 24th, 25th, and 28th. So that kind of gives me an idea like the last week of February is a really good time to plant my above ground crops. Um, root crops um, are more like middle of the month. Plant flowers are kind of sporadic through the month. Um, seed beds. Uh, the 11th and 12th and harvest dates are the 13th, 14th and 18th of February. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the best days to plant and harvest according to the moon. And there's a whole slew of science behind this, but they have um, been able to scientifically prove that there are specific phases of the moon that affect the root systems of our plants and they affect the um, volatile oils of our herbs and the ripeness of our fruits and um, like the water content versus the flavor content um, because the moon guides and uh, basically controls the tides of the ocean, right? So the ebb and flow of the ocean is in the high tides and low tides is determined by the moon. And if you think about that in terms of our plants, the water in our ground is going to be closer to the surface the same time that the tides are going to be higher in the ocean. And if you line that up with when the moon is pulling the water, it's pulling the water up out of the earth, it's pulling it towards the heavens. And that's when the plants are going to be pulling up water up into their roots. And when the moon is letting it all go, it's letting it flow away from the earth. And um, that is when the water is going to be further down into the earth and the roots will be drying out just a little bit more and the water just won't be quite as available to the roots. It'll just be a little bit, you know, holding on to the root or holding on to the water and the nu nutrients that it already has because it doesn't know when they're going to be able to seek out that water again. So if you, if that's like a super, super simplified explanation of gardening by the moon, but if you um, are interested in it, there are hundreds of thousands of publications online. There are, I'm sure there are um, YouTube, YouTubers that are dedicated to gardening by the moon. I'm not sure. I kind of looked and I couldn't find any. So, um, I'm not claiming to be an expert at this at all. I'm just going to be bringing you along with me on my journey. It's something that I have been interested in for many years and I've looked at many books and I've taken a few classes and read many, many, many articles and it's just time to get out of my head and get my hands dirty and get underneath the moon and start gardening. Um, and that is another little piece of the moon garden that I want to incorporate and why I think having a garden filled with white flowers that guide us through the garden would also be so magical and beautiful if I could actually do gardening, like actually get in my garden under the full moon and get in the soil and, you know, plant something or harvest something and like literally 
garden by the moon. I think that would be something really special to um, have in my life to be a part of. And so those are the three areas of moon gardening that I'm going to be um, incorporating into my life and taking you along with me is following the phases of the moon so that I plant and harvest um, according to the moon phases and um, creating beautiful spaces in the garden that are illuminated underneath the full moon and making it so that my garden is fully accessible without any alternative lights that enable that will enable me to garden under the moon by the moonlight. So I hope you were inspired by this. I hope that this is something interesting to you. Um, I will only be like hyper focused on it on Mondays. I might touch on it um, through the week, but I'm kind of thinking as I get into it on Mondays, I might just kind of do a highlight and say, hey, go back over last week's video and you'll notice that this is um, what we did in this video and it was because the moon was in this particular phase and we'll just kind of highlight it that way without everything being about the moon. Um, and that allows me to do like some bulk research and just give a presentation about it rather than talk about the moon in every single um, video because that, it, that doesn't feel natural to me. Naturally, I just want to get the task done and work in my garden. So um, yeah, I think that's how that format's gonna go. We'll see what happens, but um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to be accountable to you, my audience and myself and do this really beautiful journey in the garden. So until the next time, keep celebrating your life and we will see you in the next video. Bye.